Hey, all my Be Wellers here. This is Brisha with the Being Well with Being Co. podcast. I am the owner of Be Well and Be Free Wellness, and I'm here to bring you yet another episode of the Being Well with Being Co. and the Disney Mom Say mashup. So we're a little bit behind with you guys. We haven't gotten out to you. We've had a lot of things going on, um, a lot of things to catch up on, a lot of new information to bring you guys, and we definitely can't wait to dive full force into it. And we're definitely going to start off today with kind of a longer version of the Disney Roundup. Um, Disney has been putting out a lot of new things, uh, a lot of exciting times, mm-hmm. and it's definitely an exciting time to be a Disney lover uh, in this day and age. And also, it's bringing a new kind of research in for future Disney lovers, which is a safe. safe. So I'm going to toss it over to Ashton so she can get you started on what she has for the Disney Roundup. Hey everyone, I'm Ashton. I am the founder of the Disney Mom site and the Disney Mom herself. And today I have a lot, a lot of juicy stuff. The Disney Experience app is supposedly, allegedly, coming out with an update. And in this update, you can order quick service meals to go. Which I think is smart. Especially if you're in the park and you just want to grab something, go, you have kids, no need to wait on the long lines. I think that that is a great idea, personally. And Pirates of the Caribbean is now 50. 50! That's craziness. But opened, the ride opened in Disneyland 50 years ago. Nuts. <clears throat> the Beauty and the Beast movie has it now out. I haven't seen it yet, but Brisha has. Uh, I, what have, did you think? I, ha- I have lots of thoughts. Um, definitely, I've kind of had a full on Beauty and the Beast week this week. I think I've done a lot of kind of Beauty and the Beast activities per se to keep my little self busy over the last few days. Um, so I've taken. A lot of pictures, a lot of notes, a lot of different things to kind of be mindful of with it. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of great things. Um, I listened to, I kicked it off with, I listened to the soundtrack, kind of ran through before the movie, just to get a feel for it. Uh, I looked and peeked around the merchandise at Magic mm-hmm. Kingdom, as well as Disney Springs, to see what's been out, and a couple of other retailers. And I even went and did uh, Be Our Guest. So I've kind of emerged immerse myself in the whole entire Beauty and the Beast experience, kind of just going full throttle with it, and kind of really, you know, getting myself prepared for the movie and to see the movie. And let me tell you, that was not easy. Uh, Tickets literally everywhere down here in the Orlando area were sold out. Um, I got lucky. I got a 1025 showing last night at Disney Springs, which I was totally shocked about. Um, I even went back to buy a third ticket and couldn't do it. There was no seats left. So... Definitely, let's get into it. Um, I think that with Beauty and the Beast, that it's definitely bringing a whole new light and research to the brand. Oh, yeah. And it's bringing us a new generation of fans, uh, especially little girls, which I think is so important. Um, I think that they really did. I was not a fan of the Cinderella live action. I think it kind of fell short of what they were trying to prove. I don't think this Beauty and the Beast version did. Um, I think I'm all for it. I'm all for them bringing it into the mainstream and kind of, you know, revamping and just really showing that they want to tell a story. It's not, it's to the T of the original. There is added extra stuff in there, Mm -hmm. which is great because I think it finally gives us all of the questions we had in the 91 version are now kind of answered. We're not left lingering with, well, what about this and what about that? Mm -hmm. I also think an important thing that it is bringing into the light of, you know, the overall themed lesson of Beauty and the Beast is, is first and foremost, never judge a book by its cover. Um, it does a wonderful thing of kind of instilling that lesson, mm-hmm. especially in young children, and kind of going for it. But I think the other underlying theme here in Beauty and the Beast is definitely kind of that girl power, women's right, the right for you to make your own choices and to be your own woman. Um, I'm not going to get into the whole... You know, is it Stockholm Syndrome? Is it not? Yeah. I'm not kind of, that's not neither here nor there. You could go back and forth with 50 different movies about if that was the case with them. Exactly. But I really do think in this version, I was a little worried about 
making Bellinger and Spencer, I kind of rolled my eyes and scoffed at it and was like, mm. eh, I don't want to see this. But how it tied in, I think, was really kind of essential to showing you finally how, why did the villagers kind of not accept her? Yeah. Why did they think she was odd? I think it definitely hit the head on the nail with, he was before her time. She was way before her time. So I think it's kind of giving us that thing we need to have a non princessy role model uh, kind of out there. So I think I, I was very pleased with it. Um, I don't have many complaints at all with it. Uh, I had a few different things here or there that, you know, you might pick up that you may not like how they, they did it. But I think it, it was definitely the direction they wanted to go in. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as kind of the music essence of it, they definitely kept that, which was really cool to see the fact that they kept it, you know, with the same, you know, pickup and things like that. Whereas I don't think they did that with Cinderella. They kind of didn't keep the... Yeah, no. They, they definitely The musical didn't. aspect of it. So yeah. that was really good to see. Uh, what I'm really happy about, too, is uh, I was afraid that some of her clothing was kind of going to be it, and it didn't look as great kind of out there on doll on the dolls and, mm -hmm. and promo things, but actually in the movie, the stuff actually does look really good. Um, the pieces look really spot on. Okay. Uh, for me, the acting was, was there. I know Dan Stevens is getting a lot of heat for his Patrol of the Beast. I think mm -hmm. he did a really good job. Mm -hmm. I like it. I mean, most Beauty and the Beast fans hate when the Beast turns back to the Prince anyways. They still have that hate, definitely, for sure. I, I like him as the Beast better. I wish he could stay, mm -hmm. stay the Beast without, you know, uh, being kind of, you know, either mocked or killed. But uh, definitely, definitely excited about it uh, and to see where they go next in the direction of live movies. With definitely. that being said, there was a major Easter egg, and I am going to speak on it, about the Hunchback of Notre Dame. I think that might be in the works. They dropped a little subtle thing about it in mm -hmm. the Beauty and the Beast as an Easter egg, and I am going to be very excited to see if that is what they choose to do next as one of the live actions. We know that Mulan is in the works. That's exciting. It's not going to be musical-based either. It's going to just be kind of from the story perspective and yeah. kind of have a darker uh, feel to it, which is yeah. fine. I'm fine that that's probably more that's more true to the real story. But if they do a hundred rack of Notre Dame, I do hope they keep the musical component oh, in definitely. it. And I think visually that'll be a stunning film as well. I know we've had this conversation definitely. before too um, about the movies that they should do and the ones they kind of shouldn't. But as far as Beauty and the Beast is concerned, definitely hit the mark. Definitely pleased with it. Um, and the soundtrack too. I listened to it and I'm thoroughly kind of. I'm good with it. I'm I'm happy. I'm pleased with it more so because they kept Celine. Like I was happy yes. to see that Celine was still involved. I mean, I'm not too happy with the Beauty and the Beast song with John Legend and Ariana Grande. Not so much him, but her. I just I love the original. Celine will always have a place in my heart and so I was kind of disappointed about that but I'm happy that overall they did they did keep her and I, and I think it's good to touch on if they did keep her I mean I'm not an overall fan of the Ariana and John uh John Legend kind of uh mashup I do think it's a little it's just, it fell short I think yeah. it could have been a lot better um for sure. I think, too, the other thing I to point out about the Beauty and the Beast that it's getting a lot of backlash for is for it being one of the first openly gay characters of Disney to be on screen, uh, which I think a lot of people forget that kind of the genius behind the music of uh, Beauty and the Beast, he was a gay man. And I think a lot of people don't like to touch upon that. And they don't like to bring it up. But it's a key thing to understand that a lot of the songs that were written in Beauty and the Beast um, were from the perspective of the fact that he was dying from AIDS. It really had nothing to do about, you know, the Beast being a Beast. It actually had to do about um, his battle with AIDS and how he didn't see kind of a cure. Howard Ashton definitely was before his time in, in the musical essence, and he's wrote one of some of the best Disney classics. But that is where the writing and the lyrics come from was a t kind of time for him of despair and pain and what he was going through. So he's definitely, he kind of gave more of the vision for the beast as well. 
uh, to humanize the beast. So I think it was kind of a way, a nice, neat way for the studio to pay homage to, yeah, uh, to him and kind of tying that in. You know, if you watch the animated series, uh, animated version, I think Lafue is always over the top and ridiculous, and you know that he had the tendencies yeah. kind of in the background of that. But I think that's kind of something that's getting. If you want to go into the issues of the movie, that's getting thrown out there. But like I said, people should definitely remember kind of the backstory to the original and what was going on. But in case but I didn't, see it as so much film. more than that. I see it as, you know, from a mother's perspective, I see nothing wrong with it. Because you know what? We're supposed to teach our children to embrace who they are and to be proud of who yes. they are and to not judge others and to see, you know, parents on social media bashing Disney and bashing the movie, a movie that they haven't even seen because there's a gay character. Why? Why? Like, there's no, there's no need for that because for all you know, your child is gay. This is true. And, and it definitely reason that in search of, you know, kind of just not judging a book by its cover mm -hmm. and going back to the basic lessons of life, mm -hmm. of just being, you know, overall accepting. So I think a lot of people are giving Disney that backlash for it. And it kind of just is what it is. It's going to happen. It happens in all different um, adaptions of work now. Mm -hmm. you, you have that similar kind of underlying uh, tone right now going on in the Marvel franchise. If you want to get into it, you know, think about Captain America and Bucky, what's going on there. You really don't know. There there are several characters over time that have had lean towards the, you know, borderline what are they, what is their sexuality, which I think it it's interesting how different studios decide to go about introducing it and kind of, you know, making it a thing and bringing it to a forefront. But, you know, it for sure, like I said, I think the movie kind of landed where it needed to land. It they did a really good job with it. Few things I kind of could have done with or without in it, but yeah, pretty much I was pleased with it. And yeah. we'll see what happens yeah. going further. I think too, uh, Luke Evans is probably he plays a great bad guy. So. Mm -hmm. That, for sure. He brings Gaston yeah. to life in a way I didn't think could be done, mm -hmm. and it was definitely done. So, yeah. you know, hit the head on the nail there. I, I wasn't, I didn't think I was going to be too much of a fan. I thought I was going to kind of have Harry Potter, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> stuck in my head yeah. as I was watching it. That's what I'm afraid thing. of. And don't be yeah. afraid of it. I, I was definitely afraid of that, too. That this is what I'm going to have stuck in my head, but I will say, you know, pretty good job, mm -hmm. too. And, you know, we're going to get on my soapbox about this. Uh, Mr. McGregor there, I, I need my Obi-Wan Kenobi stand alone films. Disney, where are you? Okay? We need this. We need this. We need you to get it done. Uh, he's already on record. He does not want to be old as Alec Guinness was, you know, shooting a new hope. So let's mm -hmm. get on this and get our Obi-Wan stand alone movies. Uh, which brings me into my next Disney touch upon. Uh, we're going to touch upon some Star Wars stuff. So, we're going to know way more about Star Wars in the next coming weeks because uh, Celebration is coming uh, April 18th, I believe. Star Wars Celebration, which is going to be a major thing. Uh, a lot of unanswered questions. Uh, Star Wars Rebels is about to come to an end this weekend. It'll be an hour-long episode, so we shall see what happens. My prediction for this is that either it's going to end kind of at the Rogue One point, or it's the, by the next season, you're going to see Rogue One uh, kind of in from the eyes of the Ghost crew and what happens there. Uh, devastating news from this week's episode with Star Wars Rebels. They did finally decide to kill all off. So, very interesting. Uh, another kind of interesting theory going around is now that Ezra knows that Obi-Wan Kenobi is alive, is another kind of direction to see where they're going to bring Star Wars with. And if, in fact, Ezra is going to turn out to be who Benicio Del Toro, Del Toro is playing in the next episode. So, see a lot of theories on that. We'll see what we have to ultimately end up seeing where Rebels ends. And it has been renewed for a fourth season. So that's kind of my catch-up for that. And if you haven't caught that show, definitely it's a great kids show. It teaches a lot of good, valuable lessons about, you know, just owning it, being yourself, kind of finding your way, knowing that you need a team, knowing that you need teamwork behind you, and stuff like that. Um, 
Also, too, in Beauty and the Beast, there was another pirate trailer. Mm-hmm. I heard. And it says that this is the last adventure. I got a prediction on this one. What do you think? I don't think it is. This is why. Orlando Bloom and Keira Knightley are both back in this movie. Mm-hmm. Keira Knightley's screen time is minimal. Mm-hmm. I think however Pirates is going to end is going to be kind of... Keira Knightley will be all the way at the end, maybe the end credit scene, the preview for the next one. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to end with somehow... Orlando Bloom's character and Keira Knightley, you know, he gets to go walk the land every so many whatever. Yeah. Um, I think that's how it's going to end. That's my prediction. Okay. I don't have a prediction because I haven't seen it. <laughs> I don't think it's the last movie, though. I, I really hope don't. not. Because I'm, I'm not ready to let go of that just yet. Um... And then the last thing that I wanted to touch on quickly is the wildlife in Florida. It's getting warmer. We're getting closer to summer. And last year when I was, when I was there, there was a tragedy that occurred. I'm not going to mention any names just for privacy reasons, but a little boy was killed um, because of a gator attack. The summer is when... It's mating season. And that's what so many people don't understand. Stay away from water. Unless it's a pool, stay away from it. Don't go near it. There's snakes. I mean, I've never had any encounters with snakes. But the other thing to keep an eye out and, you know, realize is gators can climb. You're on that first floor patio. When we were there last year, we were at Old Key West. Our patio, we were on the first floor, and directly out of our patio was a lake, whatever you want to call it. Um, And you would hear ruffling in the bush. There was one night where I was sitting in the hot tub with my husband, and we had to leave and call the front desk because you heard in the bushes behind us baby crocs crying for their mother. That is scary very scary. So I just ask that you educate yourselves on the sounds that they make, you know, the babies, because if there's babies, the mother is bound to be near somewhere. Keep yourselves safe. Stay far, far away from the water. Disney has now since updated their signs to say to keep out of the water and that there's warnings of, you know, there could be gators, there could be snakes. Just don't. (laughs) Just don't go near that because that was such a tragedy for I can't even begin to imagine what that family is still going through all because they went into the water um it is definitely interesting how Disney kind of has put that signage up and kind of has done what they need to do on their end like from a due diligence standpoint uh definitely with kind of trying to Obviously, you can't kick the gators out if they're not a trial It's just not going to happen uh, in that essence. So it's kind of just be mindful that you are in Florida. There's, there is tons of creatures mm-hmm. everywhere, all around. Uh, even where I live in my apartment complex, there are signs that say, do not step uh, kind of in the grass. There could potentially be gators. Um And it's crazy because you see people who live down here who, oh, let me go sit next to the water. Let me have my kids play. And it's like, no, it's it's just not worth it, you know. Nope. So it, it kind of is a good little thing to kind of put that of Just be mindful of the fact that, you know, this is the area and there is whatever. And if you if you want to be closer to wildlife and you want to learn more, there are tons of places down here that you can connect with. If you want to see gators, feed gators, if that's your thing, but you can go ahead and do that. There's with, a place um, where you can safely learn and explore. It, yeah. For sure. Excellent, honey. There's places where you can get educated. and.